Welcome to Treasured Tidbits once again. Today we are filming from Bakersfield and at our very good friend's house, the Carters. This is Christy Carter, Richard Carter, and of course my husband, David Hammonds, and I am again Catherine Hammerling Hammonds. And it's snowing outside. Mm. Oh. <laughs> uh, we are going to be doing yet another couple excerpts from my books. This one is from the latest book, the one that was published within the last year. So we want to thank you so much for joining us. Uh, the scenes that we're going to be doing are, again, as I said, from my latest book. The Also, I should mention that the music, the intro music and the exit music will be done by, again, my favorite band, Made in Ireland, where Dave is the drummer. Uh, you've probably seen him in some of the previous videos and also the lead singer, Randy and his wife, helped us with a video and we got some live music on that one so that's pretty cool so if you want to know about more about them just hang around and you'll learn some more at the end of the video so as far as the scenes go I should do a disclaimer I am not a professional actor none of these people as wonderful as they are are not professional actors not one acting lesson check this out not a single one and uh, the only one of this Never group paid so it makes it not professional. Uh, the only one of the scripts that actually do a British accent fairly well is is Dave. <laughs> the rest of us, uh, we'll probably give up trying somewhere in the middle if we even start trying. I'm not exactly sure who's going to be doing what, but we're we are going to do the best we can, and we hope that uh, despite our abysmal acting. Um, skills you will enjoy the scenes which we are and, going to be reading. And we're a little goofy because it's late at night and we're recording this thing so... Yeah so yeah. we're going to be having Take probably it. more fun with this than we, we would normally have and we hope you'll uh, stick with us through that as well. Are you and, your books aren't fun? Oh my books are hilarious okay, but even it. more so and and to be frank I'm sure there's going to be some some great outtake material. Yeah, because as we all know, one. adaptability is a necessity in life. Oh, well, that's a very wise uh, adage, honey. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. I liked it. <laughs> so the first scene, we're, the first scene we're going to be doing is um, Sarah, who is the heroine, and Dave, who is the hero, have apparently angered the villain who is the Earl of Blackwood. Mwahaha, <laughs> indeed. And he has uh, maligned our name throughout the village. And as a result, we have been kicked out of our, our room at or the end. Or drug it through the mud, whatever. Yeah. Whatever you want to use. Thank you, honey. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started with the, the first scene. So... Here we go. My lord, I'm afraid your patronage is no longer welcome here. May I ask why? Ah, uh, Lord Blackwood said you were a man of ill repute, and that your presence here would greatly affect our business going forward. I see. May I retrieve all things before we go? I uh, took the liberty of having one of our boys gather your belongings. Everything is here, sir, I guarantee. I have no doubt. <laughs> the audacity of that man, telling such falsehoods. Lady Lancaster was right to send us here. If anyone needs to be taken down a peg by the, the Garden Society, it's the Earl of Blackwood. What man? Wait, what? The Garden Society sent you here? Of course. I assumed you knew that. No. You told me you wanted to help the Coles. Why would I think Lady Lancaster would get involved? Does this mean you are one of her spies, too? Hmm? We really should cut him off. 
Um, why do you sound so surprised? Hannah told me she let you in on our little secret. Well, yes, she did, but I didn't think... You, you didn't think um, I would have been included by Lady Lancaster because I'm too loud, clumsy, or just plain stupid? I'm sorry, Sarah. I know you well enough now to see what an asset you would be. But when Hannah first told me of the society, I was not prepared to give you the credit you are clearly due. I suppose I can understand your mistake. <laughs> I myself was surprised when Lady Lancaster included me. It has taken some time for me to realize my own value. I can't then hold it against you for not realizing it either. You are remarkable, Sarah. I will not forget that again. Thanks, then. Now, about Blackwood. Why spread such lies? To what purpose? He's scared. That can be the only explanation. He is worried we are going to find out something. Though about what I am not sure. Surely about William. Yes, but I think there is more to it. William is just one man. He's being found innocent. May sting Blackwood's pride. But ultimately does him no damage. Why make such a fuss? Do you think it has something to do with whatever he is looking for on his property? I swear for the I swear. I am beginning to lean that way, yes. I think he is trying to send a message to anyone else who may think of trespassing on his land. Perhaps he is afraid whatever he is looking for will be found by accident by someone else. We need to locate the Potters now. They must know something for Blackwood to be so intent on destroying them. I am inclined to agree. Yeah. Then I suggest we find a place for you to sleep. Good Lord. Melinda, what are you doing here? Some of my spies told me that Blackwood was coming here. I thought he might try to force you out of town. He has done something like this before, I gather? The Lord likes to throw his weight around, that is certain. And you know of a place we can get a room outside the purview of said Lord? As a matter of fact, I do, if I may. I'm taking you to my house. We have an attic room. It's nothing special, but it's clean. I'm sure it will be just fine. I hope our presence will not be putting your parents out, however. That wouldn't be possible. My parents died years ago. Oh, Melinda, I'm so sorry. It was so long ago. My brother and I were left in the care of my maiden aunt. She is, uh, curmudgeonly, to say the least. It would probably be best if we didn't alert her to your presence. I'm not sure we would be comfortable deceiving your aunt in that way, Melinda. Uh, certainly we wouldn't want to get you in any trouble. You really are a gentleman, aren't you? I endeavor to be so, yes. Huh. Nice to know such things actually exist. But in this case, it really would be better to do things my way. My aunt has kept us healthy and fed by telling tales to the Earl. I know she means well, but she doesn't seem to see the turmoil of the rest of the cottagers and the husbandmen. You aren't from the working class, are you? No, uh, not originally. No. Technically, we are of the gentry. My father was a baron, Baron Monmouth, but we were left penniless when he died, and now we rely on the charity of the Earl. Which comes at a price. Exactly. Hmm. I suppose under the circumstances, some subterfuge is required. Good. Because we are here. Oh! <laughs> it's lovely, dear. And that's the end of the first scene with perhaps some uh, 
um, what's the word when you impromptu? That's it. We've got some improvisation going on here a bit. So that's the scene, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about my books, that information will be included at the uh, once we finish speaking. I'll put some more music on uh, from Maiden Ireland. Uh, we're going to take a small <laughs> refreshment break. Uh, and I want to again thank our friends, the Carters, Christy and Richard. Read a book. And, did you just say read a book? <laughs> Excellent advice. Preferably one of mine. <laughs> that would be great. And, well, um, all of hers. All of mine, yes, but they start with one. Each run them and okay. say your prayers. And that too. And so I want to thank you again for joining us. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please look for others and see if perhaps you might enjoy them all. And it's half face. It is. It's half. I think we're going to have to call this one done. Thank you again so much for, for joining us. I stepped on board a vision. I followed with the wind Till next I came to anchor At the cross near Spansel Hill T'was on the 23rd of June The day before Cluny